A lot of debauchery. Crazy. Talk yeah. to me about. Talk to me about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we yeah, me and Rodney went around the world a couple of times mm. uh, with one extra, and doing what we're doing, and we were both, you know, peaking yeah. at that time. Yeah. Both had big tunes out. and, and Both on radio, boom, boom. You know, Craziest story, please. I want the craziest story that you can tell on the podcast <laughs> right now. <laughs> Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official dot com. Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. Owls. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central London or as central as you need to be, choose to be, want to be, you don't want to be anywhere else. Big shout out to the sharers and carers, the people that have been supporting us from the jump, keeping you out of trouble we have. So share and tell a friend to tell a friend. How sponsors the mighty GK Nifty Heads of a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gknifteyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. Inside the house, talking to friends. Oh my goodness, it was a. It, it felt like a long time, but we eventually got him in. He couldn't <laughs> escape. I pinned him down in the corner of a room and said, "Get in here." <laughs> in all fairness, this gentleman has had a life of many lives. Lives that has taken him around the globe. Albums upon collaborations upon Rodney P upon everybody um, and some that uh, is within my phone book and uh, friend circle. Uh, he is a producer of the UK <laughs> hip hop variety and a sound system. And bang, he goes by the name of Skits. Oh, Daddy Skits. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, it's taken a while to get here, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're totally. finally here. It's good to be in this space. I feel like I know it so well because I've seen so many podcasts, man. Yeah, it's... Uh, it it's... feels at home. Yeah, I, I like that. Second home. That's it. Hey, well, I'll take it, man. I mean, because you, you, you're into all forms of rocking, aren't you? you know, from... I definitely am, mate. I practice all the elements. Yeah. I always have done, man, oh, you know. Yeah. Graph yeah. and everything, you know. Yeah, thing. yeah. I was skits way before I was skits the graffiti artist before really? the hip hop producer. Yeah. Really? And obviously back in the days I was a breaker. Yeah. I bust the wicked crazy legs, still can. Really? Ask, yeah. Ask Rodney, I can bust the wicked crazy legs. That's incredible. Can't do the hopping windmill no more. <laughs> but I can still bust the good crazy legs and a one legged swipe. Still do that, really? man. Do you know what I mean? Me. Yeah, yeah, every this element. This is gonna be such a good podcast <laughs> because it, it, it comes from you come from an era. And I don't think a lot of people um, really, uh, they just know you as the producer. They do, yeah. Yeah, if you know me well, then you know that I'm, I used to write graph and you know that I used to break dance. And if you see me drunk, then you'll know I bust a crazy leg. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, most people know me as the producer or the DJ. Mm. Um, and one hell of a fucking DJ you are as well, brother. My God. I well, mean, I don't know. Like, I, I always thought I was a bit of a shit DJ, really. Selector. I, selectors, selectors, brother. yeah. Like, technically, I'm, I've always been a bit shit. It's not shit. But you know what? I always had selector. tunes that no one else had. And yeah. I was always cutting plates at Music House. You know, I was queuing up with the Jungle guys in 92, 93, cutting plates by hip hop place. No. Yeah, way. I've got music house dubs for days. You can't tell me this you're a bad boy <laughs> DJ for not only for that singular reason, but the way that you have these exclusives, the way that yeah. you you mix and blend the genres that define um the era of hip hop. I used to get frustrated hearing hip hop DJs all playing like it sounded like they were playing out of the same box. You know, if I heard Anti up again, I'd be like, oh, man. Bass on. drop! Yeah. <laughs> and so I used to try and mix up the reggae and the hip-hop because I always reggae was always a backbone for me, whatever. Mm. Um, it was always in the background. And if you get into my car, you hear, you hear Roots reggae. You don't really hear pop. Um, so, yeah, I put reggae artists on top of hip-hop and I put hip-hop artists on top of reggae and just mix it up a bit and have some specials and one aways and, and when I started producing, I was making tunes and playing them out that night. So And then in come Rodney P. The, the, the two-headed yeah. the, the two headed dynamic duo. You the sound monster. Like, you sound like some Greek monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were talking cheese, wasn't it, me and Rodney? Yeah. Like, yeah, he's, he's, he's the rapper, I'm the DJ. Yeah. It literally was that. Yeah. I'm the little country boy, hippie kid. Yeah. He's the little inner city rude boy. And it just, you know, he'd never been to a festival. I'd never been to like, you know, when I first met Rodney... Destiny hooked us up in the record shop because he had heard my beats and uh, he liked them. Rodney P was a hero of mine. Mm -hmm. Like, 
from when I was 17, 18. I was listening to London Pussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know. So, um, big up Destiny, by the way. <laughs> yeah, big up right. Destiny. So when I first went to meet Rodney, I was nervous, man. And I walked in. I remember walking in. He was in Denmark Hill and there was stairs going up and he was lifting weights in the corner and there was some girl in a bikini ran across from one bedroom to the next and I was like oh my god everything they say is true oh, so but that's you know amazing. <laughs> this is this was this orchestrated was this a thing I don't know, <laughs> that's man. incredible all I knew is like yeah yeah he lived up to expectations and obviously we just gelled so yeah. like yeah that relationship stood the test of time really chalk and cheese like yeah he's my brother well we'll get into that a little bit more later mm. but for now let's let's get into your childhood so where are you originally from my brother do you know what? I was born in a windmill in Cambridge. Really? Yeah. Wow. So my mum and dad were hippies, kind of 60s hippies. They met in Algeria working for a charity and they decided to come back to England and start a um, a hippie commune. So they were looking for old farmhouses. Like, this ain't your average hip-hop story. Nah. You know, I'm Incredible. a middle-class hippie kid, really. Yeah. That's what I am. <laughs> like, I grew up on a little farmhouse... There was like five or six families in the middle of Exmoor, in Devon. In Devon, in Exmoor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got family in Devon, so yeah. I know exactly the So time. like, you know, my nearest shop was three miles away. Yeah, 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 I get you. And, um, but it was a very creative place. Mm. <clears throat> and um, there was a gang of kids running around like Lord of the Flies, you know. Mm. And I was one of them little hippie naked kids running naked at festivals. I was one of them. Really? You know, when you go to festivals, you see kids like that. that when was Glastonbury me. was really Glastonbury. Not well, Glastonbury no, 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 was yeah. free to get in. Yeah. Like, the guy that lived on my commune started the Greenfield. <laughs> and like, he used to build solar power showers. And he was the first one to put the, the solar powered hot tubs and all that stuff in Greenfield at Glastonbury. No way. Yeah, yeah. That's bonkers. <laughs> that you, I, my <laughs> mind went back to the levellers and bands like that. Yeah, yeah. People that were really used, fundamental to, in the Glastonbury scene. And I used to sell black ash to the levellers. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> that was a lover's story. Amazing. Listen, that, that, this, this actually follows on from a conversation we had, the serendipity of, of uh, the Northwest region. So exactly where we are. Uh, oh, fuck it, Kensal Rise. You know exactly where the fuck we are. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, that we have a... Uh, a, uh, a a mutual friendship and experiences with Naina Cherry, Cameron McVeigh, yeah, and yeah, such. Yeah. You seem to be like this social butterfly of the I culture. I don't know how I really did that. Like I was just always in the right place, and I was always out and about. So I just met everyone, even when you know I used to from from Devon. That's when I got into hip hop. I was the only hip hop kid in the village. Like. I was walking down Barnstable High Street, which is like where I grew up, nearest big town, with my lino and my ghetto blaster and my deerstalker hat and my gazelles. Like, and all my mates were like skinheads or gothics. And like, yeah, yeah. I was the hip hop kid. Wow. And I don't know why, really. Like, I discovered electro and I went to Freestyle 85. Game changer, right? Game changer. Wow. So I remember I had a yellow Pringle jumper on <laughs> and I was 15. Like, you know, and I'd been listening to a bit of electro and I was kind of feeling it. But my mate's dad was a photographer and he was going up there. So we just went. And there I saw proper MCs, proper DJs, proper breakers, proper graphics. That you'd never, because you'd always been on your own up until that point. I would kind of, yeah, I'd been on my own. But I'd listen to John Peel and tape the hip hop tracks. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But after that, I saw Imperial Mixers and I saw, I saw proper DJs, Daddy Speedo on the Ooh. mic. Big up speed. And yeah. and Chrome Angels doing graph. Yeah. Like, you know, and that was my big introduction, really. Like, yeah. that's where I saw it all in one place. And I, I embraced, from that, I embraced all the yeah. elements and I wanted to do everything. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. went home. I didn't have no decks, but I had pause button mixes that I would do with, I had free hi fi sets, shitty old tape decks, all set up, all set up, sets all laid out. Bits of Fat Boys, bits of Curtis Blow, bits of Martin Luther King speeches <laughs> over just instrumentals yeah. and I'd bust them all in and play. I hadn't got any of them left, but wow, man, I used to do that for days. And then I bought my first pair of decks for £25 each, which were just, you know, belt drive shit. Mm. Like, but I had to build the boxes for them and they're just the top bits. Mm. My mixer didn't even have a crossfader. It was like a balanced side wow. to side. Man, that's how I started. And I just carried on going and... Yeah, I fell in love. I realised that I couldn't do everything. I was a pretty good breaker mm -hmm. at one point. Mm -hmm. um, but I realised that DJing and music production was where, like, that was my strength. It, yeah. it was a calling almost. 
Well, I you felt that felt you, you ever rapped though? Not really, no. No. no, so rapping was like I could always write lyrics, but I never liked the sound of my voice. I always thought my voice was a bit too nasal, and yeah, I didn't like it. I always thought other people sounded better. I knew I wasn't good enough mm. to be a rapper, mm-hmm. so I never really practiced that art. That's probably the one element I didn't really ever advance in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's funny that. But graph, I was running around doing pieces everywhere, mm-hmm. going up to Bristol, mm-hmm. staying with my people. Uh, you know, we did quite a few big pieces in Bristol back wow. in the days. And Bristol was honing me at that time because I was going to the Moon Club and Tropics Club with yeah, people yeah. I knew in Bristol. Big reggae sound there as well. Smith and Mighty honed me, man. That's yeah. where I fell in love with bass music. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. reggae music was always my love, anyway. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> I'd see Wild Bunch underneath Temple Mead Station, <laughs> and I'd be running around, you know, smoking a lot of weed, skateboarding, and just going to all these clubs and meeting a lot of people. DJ Milo. Um, was a massive inspiration for me. Yeah. Um, just because he used to play across the board and he was such a good mixer. Um, I swear to God, man. It's but like... Bristol, I fell in love with the bass. When you talk, I, 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 I get flashbacks of eras that I wasn't even in. Like, I just think <laughs> of like, I think of, it's a real nostalgic place, man. And to be skits, I mean, you would... You were literally a butterfly. You were just flying around Bristol, London, did it? One of the things is, I've, the first hip hop moments were in Bristol and then I moved to Brighton when I was 17 I moved to Brighton and my mate had a flight in Brighton and I was DJing and working in a record shop and just selling weed and just living the life wow. like and then Brighton got too small like mm. I was doing parties with Fatboy Slim and mm. Midfield General and all them people that were big in Brighton and I got to a point where I was like oh, mm. I need to be in where the hip hop is yeah. I came to London and that's so where... I moved to Brixton and then yeah, I never looked back on the production side of things and, you know, I was hanging out at all the hip-hop clubs. was probably where I met you. Yeah. And I met everyone on the scene at that time and that's where I put Country Man together. And it all hail Country Man, the album, wow. Um, it, it was almost like the A to Z of, of, uh, of sound and, you know, MCs. It was... I it, was lucky, man. It was a lucky time. It was timing was just lucky. I just picked out some people that I've been hanging out with in clubs and put them on a record. Yeah, but and I had Rowan in as the back in because they mixed and mastered my tunes well. Yeah, they yeah, really they did. Really, the engineering we didn't cut corners, and I think that's what made that album stand out. Yeah, it sounded big. You did, did, you did one with Dynamite, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that was the one. That was the one I was thinking. We about. make a mate. We Bad make a mate. Noise. We. Make I never a used to play that Ooh. until I heard the Scratch Perverts <laughs> playing it. Actually, really. Well, yeah. and then it was like, yeah, okay. I'll and go I was with like, it. okay, that actually sounds alright. I don't, I'm not very good at playing my own tunes. Where my mind is at, one hundred percent. That was the introduction to me discovering skits. That was my first tune, really. That first was tune. it. Yeah. it. For me, it was like that. The, the way that chord progression happens as well. And I never heard anything like Roots Maneuver back in then. No, nothing really compared to it. I mean, I just told this story recently, but that was such a lucky break. Yeah. I was living in White City yeah. with two girls in a block of flats mm. and... Um, I was making beats all day long. So Becky, one of the girls, she was like, oh, you should meet my boyfriend. He's a rapper. And I was mm. like, and it was Rodney, Roots. Just on a random. On a random. And I, and I gave him a little beat tape. He chose a couple of beats. But that beat, actually, I'd been live. I moved and I was living in Hackney after White City. Yeah. And um, I used to live opposite Glissel Park. And Giles Peterson lived the other side, Brownswood Road. Mm. And um, I used to see him all the time. We had mutual friends. And he used to let me go down to his basement <laughs> and just dig through tunes. And I happened to pick out that Jean-Luc Ponty track and sampled it, not knowing that it was a jazz funk classic mm. for where my mind is at. Mm. And all the jazz buffs picked up on that. And so that tune crossed over to the jazz hip-hop world as well as yeah. being big on the hip-hop scene. So that really helped me and Rodney Back in the day, that was that was a good boost for both of us. Ronin was a beast. As, I mean, they had, did they wasn't it Shazer that did the artwork for Ronin? Shazer did my artwork. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. Well, yeah, bad man. Yeah. And it's just so it's ironic that you know he was working in the record store. Yeah, they'll come around podcast actually. To be fair, yeah. all the WD lot. Do you know what I mean? Like, but he was that was that the look of yeah, yeah. the look of the album was so important, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, and I was, I was didn't cut corners on anything. Yeah. Like you know, the manufacturing, the artwork. Mm. Um, she won, did the lettering on yeah. the on the front of it, and I had, you know, I was friends with all the graph artists. Charlie was part of my crew. I mean, me and Charlie did a whole K 
campaign for Galliano where we did like seven pieces all around London. What? Yeah, with Snatch. So it was me, Charlie, Snatch. We wow. Did all these, like, yeah. And we did a lot of work together. I, I was never as good as Charlie or Snatch or <laughs> Theo. Like. Hey, no way, bro. Like, when you, you know, you're, you're standing with John. Speak up, Snatch, wow. Another, you know, musical, transferable skill set yeah, yeah. kind of guy. But I've always, like, I've loved, graph has been a massive thing in my life. Yeah. And I love graph. Like, some of my, you know, Inky from Bristol. Oh, like, damn. I know so well now. Mao Mao is, like, my brother now. Like, yeah. he's, he's my oldest friend. Yeah. And he's blowing up now. He's just yeah. brought out a book. It's amazing. And uh, it's just really nice to see everyone from back in the day coming through now. Mm. Whatever element you practice then. Mm. And now you're teaching it. Mm. Now, yeah. now you're a dance teacher. Or now you're a music instructor. Or now you're, you're making money from the DJ or the artwork somehow. It's true. And it, hip-hop just spawned all these creative people, man. Yeah, it's true. The The... Element of graph, I think Tizer called it the, the football hooligans of hip hop. <laughs> I'm not with that. That sounds all right. And it, and and uh, there well, are half these... of them were football hooligans. That's <laughs> yeah, all right. That's true. Big up Jackson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Simon. Hold on. Um, I'll, I'll say this much: it, it's it, it's everything within hip hop is in balance. Mm. Everything is everything is balanced, and that's what makes the, the more aggressive side so appealing. It's like making this. You make the soundtrack yeah, 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 for these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got to have some kind of idea about yeah, yeah. what of course. sensibilities are. Yeah, and the whole thing about hip-hop is putting that reality onto the record. Mm. Um, sometimes I wish I was a lyricist because I would want to put it on, but other people did it so well. Roots yeah. Maneuver fucking was amazing. Like mm. he, he blew my mind mm. with his beat making and I learned so much just leaning over his shoulder mm. watching how he made a beat. Mm. Talk to me about the production process for you. For me, it varies really. Usually, um, I mean, back in the days, it was always finding a sample first. Mm. And the sample, it was sample led. And it was pretty basic, cut and paste, man. I found some drums mm. I like, I chopped them up, mm. I put them with, you know, I'd always like, my back in the days, it used to be a folk sample, a reggae bass line, and hip hop drums. That was my formula mm. almost. That's what created my sound. There was always, I always wanted a massive bass line. That was the backbone. For the tune, always. It just goes back to the reggae influence. Yeah, and I always felt that there wasn't enough bottom end in mm. a lot of UK hip hop. I still think that today, actually, apart from the new stuff. It's true, but like, as I said to you earlier, you know, tunes like Dedicated and um, Where My Mind Is That, and, you know, just, there's just such a seismic difference in sound when you put them up mm. against not just UK hip hop, but it's, it's, that, it, that music of that time, and it, that's why it's still... I think Ronin were a big part of that. They taught me to spend time on the mixing and the mastering. Uh, we didn't cut corners. We spent a lot of time. Yeah. You know, we weren't spending two weeks on a snare drum, but it was almost a bit like that. Really? You know. I watch kids today making music, and it's all so quick. Yeah. You know, they turn around a tune, yeah. shoot the YouTube video, get it up on Spotify all in one day. How do you feel about that? I've been inspired by it, actually, because yeah. I teach a lot of kids. And they're all into drill. That, like all they're doing is drill at yeah. the moment so um but it inspires me a little bit and i think i'm being really long man with some of the stuff i'm spending <laughs> a week mixing <laughs> a track like come on sort your shit i'll get it done quicker yeah i think we all hold, hold <laughs> but i was just stuck that. in my old school ways mm. um so yeah i think it's inspiring what the kids are doing I love it when when you what was the last album you did? I mean, was it Countryman? Was the kind of more seminal? Countryman right? came out in two thousand one. Sticksman mm. came out go. in um, two thousand eleven. There you go. Yeah. Do you feel like you're? Do you feel like you're consistent enough for your audience? Um. No, I could be doing a lot more. I mean, Leaf Dog's done four albums since January the first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is it bonkers. five? Yeah, big up Leaf Dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, mean, I mean, he's collaborating everything. I speak to Leaf. I, you know, I watch. People like Farmer churning mm. them out, and yeah. I'm like, but my life's been hectic. Mm. My life and living gets in the way of my beat making, mm. uh, and I go through spells where I just don't even want to make beats. Mm. Um, priorities aren't always beat making, mm. and I can't churn them out like they do. Mm. Like I tailor make beats for people, mm. or, or I make a beat and I have someone in mind. Mm. You know, Farmer, I'm sure he does four or five beats a day. Yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Occasionally, I might make two in a day. Yeah but they both probably be shit. So, you know, I just, I'm really picky. I take time. I that's take that's time. the way I feel. That's the way it should be. Um, yeah. But you, also, there's also the live aspect as well, which, you, you know, again, in each equal measure, mm. you're out doing it. Still, the music you created still holds true to people yeah. wanting to go and see it, right? 
I always wanted to make music that would work in a club. Mm. Um, rather than... I mean, I do make music to listen to when you're on your skateboard or on your tube or whatever. But um, most of the time, I wanted a big bouncy tune to mm. play in the club. Mm. Saying that, I don't really play my own tunes out. <laughs> There's only probably one or two tunes I play, which really? is weird. Yeah. yeah, And everyone always says, let's play your own tunes. I'm like, I don't don't like to. Yeah. I don't know why. I play really? Born in the System, the Bugsy track. Really? Yeah, I don't really play them. What about if Rodney's there? You don't do dedicated... Well, me and Rodney, we'll do a stage show, so yeah. we'll do all our tunes. Yeah, 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 that's different. But if I'm doing a DJ set, I don't really play any of my tunes. Really? Yeah. That's curious. <laughs> yeah, um, you, you guys taught a lot. A lot of debauchery. Crazy, Talk yeah. to me about... Talk to me about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we, yeah, me and Rodney went around the world a couple of times mm. uh, with one extra... And doing what we're doing, and we were both, you know, peaking yeah. at that time. Yeah, both had big tunes out, and, and both on radio, boom, boom, you know. And we were just going here, there, and everywhere. We were DJing every Friday, Saturday, every week for years, really. Yeah, um, we were putting in rap miles, mate, in my right. little golf. Really, um, we had drivers driving us sometimes, and it was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It was yeah. like, yeah. you know, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I can't tell you any because <laughs> you can't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember a few, but um, you know, we had a getaway driver driving our driving us at one point, really? and 120 in the in the on the hard shoulder when there was traffic. Really, so, just to get to the just to get to the venues, and we do three in one night. Really, I mean, there's there's crazy footage of us that I know is going to appear at some point. Really, um, of what? Of us just being what, out and speeding? about and doing stuff. <laughs> That's this footage. <laughs> Have you got footage or someone you know got the someone footage? Someone I know has got footage who used to document our travels. And Shepherd's do you get Pie, along? Big up Shepherd's Pie. And do you guys get on? Right? Yeah, we do, we do. We okay, do. so and this will surface. That, that will surface at some organically point. Organically and, um, and in, in a respectable way. We did a lot and we always hung out with the people. That's yeah. why I think we always got the return bookings. Yeah, yeah. Because you hung out with the people at the end and it was a vibe. At the end, you know, we were never into doing the show and heading straight back to the hotel. We'd yeah. go back to the after party at some random kid's house yeah, 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 and yeah. be doing whatever they were doing and just craziest fun. story please i want the craziest story that you can tell on the podcast <laughs> right now <laughs> come on i'll do it with the graph writers we can do it with the producers come on there's a story to tell i'll tell you what there's, <laughs> it's no sex and no drugs and no rock and roll in uh, this story okay. but it's quite a crazy story okay go 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 <laughs> so we we were in um kampala it's in uganda okay i sound like a fast show no, as you do. Go on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we were we were working doing some workshops out there and we had a show and downtown kampala is pretty um hectic mm-hmm. uh there's only a few traffic like, anyway there was a big traffic jam there was a big accident downtown and the promoter rings us and he's like we're not going to be able to get you to this gig on time because mm. you have to go through the downtown area um the only way we can get you there is if we bribe an ambulance driver to come get you so he goes but you're gonna have to strap in <laughs> he's gonna get you there on time <laughs> but you're gonna have to strap in so me and Rodney are like yeah so. we're up for this you yeah. know we, we don't mind a bit of danger um ambulance driver comes we strap in and I've never had such a hairy journey but it was it was amazing but so amazing I, f- I don't know why I didn't film it <laughs> I was, I was <laughs> but we were shooting through the back streets of Kampala mm. kids chickens Mud huts going everywhere. He literally, he got us to the gig early. He got us to the gig early. Wow, that's crazy. Um, through the streets. The best driver I think I've ever had in my life. It's like, and, it's uh, like the shanty Italian job at the end of the it end. It was, <laughs> it literally was. It was hilarious. <laughs> and just was pretty mad. I mean, we've got a lot, I've got loads of mad stories. Most of them sexual debauchery and hedonism. Oh, really? and The most fun I ever have is is like in a little CD basement with 200 people with a condensation dripping off the walls. With a touch of Um, carnal knowledge. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, yeah, me and Rodney have been to a lot of parties. I've been... We've been with a lot of people. We've been um, to a lot of, you know, 50 cents party in Mayfair in with naked swim, swimmers in the pool really? like you know crazy shit that but they're boring like you know i'd rather be in a warehouse party in east london <laughs> so yeah right so that's, that's a two out of ten right it's like the dial doesn't go past 13 yeah. yes it does <laughs> you know it's like we've supported jay-z in front of forty thousand people but yeah. fucking boring as shit gig man i'd rather be vacuous at, yeah i'd it's rather be in some little club in bristol playing to 200 people yeah i think that 
I think that <coughs> speaks for everyone. We've always been about a vibe. Yeah. Always been about a vibe. I've always been about a vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Take the gig of 200 over taking, you know, God knows yeah. what. Every time. It's never fun, is it, really? The big gigs aren't fun. No. And we've supported so many American artists over yeah. the years. Yeah. And um, the sounds always shit, and then they turn it up for the main act, yeah. which was always frustrating. Yeah, yeah. What's that and about? the thing is, everyone's just waiting for the main act, and it doesn't really feel like. Yeah, it's Shit's never. That, that's so true as well. Mm. I mean, yeah. It was so frustrating as an artist to go on and know that your sounds yeah. just yeah. not not being pushed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the main act come on and they pump it right up, and you can really feel it in your ribcage. Yeah. The music we listen to needs to be felt in your ribcage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, just, it just does. Yeah, it's true. Um. This is all of the time that was combined with one extra and so. I would say um, Destruction from Lethal Destruction, yeah. Bad Boy Producer. Yeah. Um, I'd also put Vadim in the mix, Mark B. These were people of your yeah. era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were these people that you would kind of curate, conversate and work I knew on? them all. You know, you I know knew them, them all. That, yeah, the creators, Mark B. All, I mean, yeah. everyone knew everyone and we'd all come up together, so yeah. there was a mutual respect there. Who was your favourites? Who were the people that you Roots like, Manoeuvre. All day, yeah. Roots Manoeuvre as a producer uh, because he was just different to everyone. He didn't yeah. follow any template. Yeah. And um, I just loved his drums. Yeah. Like, the swing on his drums was oh, crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. Like, How does that work? Yeah. Yeah. I just He'd make a beat in two minutes that I was like... Couldn't do that if I was sitting there all day. Help me out, yeah. Well, yeah, but and also when you've got when you've got somebody that is attuned to his own vocals, they, you know, he's a one man army. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I toured with Rodney, so me and hit Rodney Roots. Um, you know, we did gigs to nobody. Like me and Roots manoeuvre in a skateboard shop in Reykjavik, yeah, like yeah, yeah. DJing to mothers buying tracksuits for their kids. Really? <laughs> no one there. Predating any kind of... Predating any... Big like, dad, boom. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That was after where my mind is at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was there debauchery with Roots Maneuver in the same level of, as no. Rod? No, there really wasn't, right? <laughs> no, no, no. I couldn't imagine no. that. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we had fun. Yeah. We had yeah. fun. Um, Favourite producers then in that case, who were the people that influenced you the most? Oh, God. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's actually quite a complex one. Give me four. Um, Chimpo. Ooh, yeah. DJ Dai, my brother. Nice. Yeah, Dai. Um, I have to say Premier just because. Yeah, be really good to. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that's three now. Is uh, it three? Uh, Quincy Jones. Quincy. I mean, I, I listen to all kinds of music, yeah. I li you know, yeah. and I get inspiration from all genres. Yeah. Um, What's the tune you wish you'd made that you didn't make? Oh, you really put me on the spot, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. Um, Production-wise. Yeah. Uh, what's the difference, Dr. Dre? Really? Yeah, I love that beat. That beat's so sick. Interesting. Yeah. Ah. Um, genre you wish you'd kind of dabbled a little bit more in? Um, I've never made a jungle track. Never made a drum or bass track. It's curious, isn't it? Because yeah. again, it's because I've all, but I've, I've played. I've always played jungle. I mean, before I was on one extra, and I had tunes out. I was playing jungle. Mm. You know, I was. Um, I used to do sh nights with Jerry Dammers at the Jazz Beast in you? Farringdon for years. Me and him promoted clubs in Brixton. We were doing Loughborough Junction. We did a lot down there. We did a night called the Jam. We did a night called Freeform. <laughs> Uh, at the Dog Star for years. Yo, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that was me and Jerry Dammers. And we used to take you on a journey. So we start with jazz, then we go into hip hop, and then we go to jungle. Fuck. Because we used to have Ollie that used to run a little record shop in Piccadilly. Can't remember the name of the record shop. But he used to play jazz. Then I'd come on and play hip hop, and a bit of hip hop reggae, and jungle. And Jerry would f do the same. I just find it so. It's. It's bizarre because he was one of my heroes as well. I yeah. mean, yeah. it's bizarre how I've ended up working with my heroes. Yes, and I it's mean, bizarre how you even get yourself into these positions. I don't know how I did, really. I don't know what it is because it's not like I've got the gift of the gab or I, I slide in and lick people's asses. I, can't, no, I don't no, do that. But I you're more... and uh, This is why you're on the podcast for me personally mm. is that, aside from mate, you're more than just a producer. You're more than just a DJ. You're, you're actually just like... You're the, I, I you're, like bringing people together. Yeah. Like, that's one of the things that I like to do. You've I like to so bring much. someone from here to there and bring them together. Like-minded people, like, you know, come together, man. It's important. You've done so much. I don't think I've done that much, really. But I have done a few things, but I haven't done that much. I'm talking from a from a 
scene point of view. Right. Yeah. Maybe. Don't you? Maybe. I don't think any more than anyone else has, really. It's, I think it's your connectivity. I do like connecting people. I think um, it's important. It's lovely to link a graph artist with another graph artist or, mm. or you know, get someone to make some a soundtrack for someone that you know that's doing a film. Mm. Or, like, you know, that's, that's mm. a good feeling. Mm. It's basically just sorting your mates out. Yeah. I love sorting my Connecting, mates out. Yeah. And I love to see my mates go far and I love to see my people come through. There's nothing better. Yeah. That's why I always like to bring new kids through as well. It's I remember when I brought Bugsy thing. through, no one had heard of him and they were like, Fuck, who is this kid from Bristol that yeah. spits faster than anyone? Yeah. Like, still to this day, no one can touch bugs. And that's why I'm working with my godson now, who I've been honing mm. since day one, Joe Byrne. Fucking crazy. Yeah. So it's all coming back full cycle to... Full circle, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your, uh, your health is part of my the reason health. why you're in London at the moment. Yeah, after this, I've got to go straight to get an MRI on my heart. Um... You know, I had to die to start living. Talk to me about it. <laughs> so in November, I mean, people know I died. Yeah. Um, but let's get into it real quickly for those that, that yeah. only watch Killer Keller podcast. Good fucking, like, good right on you as well. So please. last, it was November the 6th, 2022. And um, I hadn't even been on a mad one. Everyone's like, oh, Skits, were you on a mad one? You mean Kane in it? No, I hadn't really. I think the night before I'd maybe had a lion and a, a bottle of cider. Mm -hmm. And I'd gone to bed. And the next morning I woke up, I was feeling a bit sick and I was throwing up. And then I can't really remember no more. Really? But basically I stopped breathing. And I had a cardiac arrest. And my girlfriend pulled me from the bed. She realised I wasn't breathing. She rang 999. And um, the operator talked her through and she gave me CPR for 15 minutes my heart stopped for. What? And um, she kept my, she kept the oxygen going to my brain. That whole time. So, the t shirt SD, thank you. Um, Salute. Yeah. Um, basically, I had a cardiac arrest and um, they brought me back to life with uh, proper Pulp Fiction style. Really? Really? <laughs> Adrenaline and shots. Well, look, if you're going to do it, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I don't remember any of it. And everyone's like, Skids, what did you see? What's the other side like? Did you come back with him? Did you see the light? Did you meet your ancestors? I didn't see anything and really? I don't remember anything. That's a bit. I know, yeah, yeah. but the, the one, one thing shot, I, man. The one thing I came, <laughs> the one thing I did, I came out of it not fearing death. Like weirdly, like I'm not scared to die now. Really, and I feel like no one should be scared of dying. Like mm. it's cool, you're gonna be all right. I think it's more the fear of missing out. Yeah, I didn't want to miss out. Yeah. I, my my time was not done. Yeah. I had tunes to make. I got yeah. people to meet. I got adventures still to Podcasts have. Podcasts to do and shit like that. But it made me realize, stop wasting your time, man. Yeah. And so since then, I haven't done a line of coke. Or I haven't done any drugs. Yeah. yeah. Do you recommend not doing it? And this isn't a public service announcement. It's more, would if you'd known what you know now, later on in years, would you have kind yeah, of... Yeah, I mean, I was always crazy excessive like yeah. in whatever I did. Yeah. Um, ask anyone around me. Yeah. Whatever I did, I would do more than anyone else. And I would just keep going and keep going. And I think that all just caught up with me. And my buddy just said, nah, hell no. Like, you can't carry on like this. And they they really don't know why I had a cardiac arrest, but they all they can put it down to is that rock and roll lifestyle. Really? Yeah. That's the only. That's the only thing they've checked me over. This is why I'm going for an MRI today because I had, I've had some mini heart attacks since then, so and they're saying they don't really know what's causing them. Um. So yeah, they don't know what's wrong with me. Cardiologists are a bit flummoxed. Flummoxed about it. Yeah. So how do you know when you got a, a cardiac arrest on the way? Well, no, I get these kind of angina twinges. Okay. So they give me this angina spray that I spray under my tongue if yeah. I get any symptoms, Yeah. Um, which seems to be working. I'm not sure if I don't spray what's going to happen. Well, yeah. I mean, it does seem a little volatile. But it's a, it's it's a little spray. bit weird. I've got, I yeah. feel like, you know, I'm blessed to be here, man. Yeah. I'm really, really lucky to be here. Like, you know, I'm a single dad. Yeah. You know, my girlfriend died in my arms seven years ago. <laughs> Wow. So my son's mum. So that, I was like, I can't die yet. I've got to be around for him. I've got to see him through. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I've been, and he's he's had open heart surgery two years after his mum died. How did your missus pass away? She had a brain hemorrhage while we were on holiday in um, Turkey. Oh, my God. I know. So, she and she was she was an agent for, um, she used to work for Mickey Finn. Really? Yeah, she, Urban Takeover. Yeah. Tash. Yeah. 
So um, I met a lot of jungle people through her, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like when you put it like but that. But yeah, I, I need to be around for my son. Yeah. And, and when people say skits, well, haven't you done your next album? Because I've been, you know, looking after my son. And after she passed, I spent a year curled up on the sofa watching yeah. box sets of Scandal and not really. Yeah. But my son kept me going, really. Because yeah. I could have easily gone off the rails and wandered in the desert. Yeah. And and drinking drugs could have... But he kept me focused and he kept me grounded. I had to wake up every day, make his packed lunch, get him to school, get him back. I mean, the hardest thing I ever had to do in my life was tell him that his mum wasn't coming home. And, you know, that was, that was deep. And I wouldn't wish what I went through on my worst enemy. Really? Yeah. Life for little lives, and when you when you yeah, have... I, I I didn't think I'd get my life back together. Really, I just thought my life was over. But um, about a year after, I kind of just pulled myself out of it, and just you know, I had good friends, and I, I had good family around me, and they just showed me love and and brought me through it. And uh, I met Leticia I'd known for ages, and got with her, and now we're still together. And yeah, she's been amazing. She's, yeah. she's been a rock. That's amazing. Yeah. And she kept your life. And saved my life, which she reminds me about every single day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go out tonight, babe? No. Well, actually, yeah, yeah. there's a couple of tokens here. <laughs> but, you know, it does make you think about life and put things in perspective and yeah. think what you want out of your life. And, yeah, the drugs had to go, man. Yeah. The drugs had to go and the debauchery and everything. Um, you know, I can still go out and I've realised how much tighter I am as a DJ when I'm not fucking off my face yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's nice to be playing straight actually do you know yeah. what I mean do you know what's mad though is that again it takes a and we're all we're all we're all like this all susceptible to the moment where um, you're forced to stop and the adjustments and stuff and um, you know the earlier the better it's so funny the human mind that you you think you're the best whatever on drinking. You just think you're invincible and it's yeah. never going to end, you know. And when I think back, you know, I wasn't eating properly. Yeah. I wasn't looking after myself and yeah. I wasn't treating the people around me that well, man. Yeah. I was yeah. probably being really selfish, like, yeah. coked up, selfish little idiot yeah. uh, for a few years. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah, so, sort of, I mean... No, I, I definitely have, was. You you know, reckon... And I've apologised to people and I need to apologise to a few more still, probably. Really? Yeah. Really? What? 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 Come on, more closely family related, or just just things that I didn't do, or things that I did. Like yeah. you know, I won't go into details, yeah, yeah, but obviously, and you're just missing. Yeah. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. And the money I spent, man, like fucking hell, could have yeah. bought a house. That must have been a lot of money. <laughs> that must have been a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, I don't, I don't regret it really because it's made me who I am. Yeah. That, you know, I'm here, and I, you know, I've got some stories, good stories. I'll tell the grandchildren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, yeah. <laughs> but I want to be around for my grandchildren. Yeah. Do you, know I mean? Do you think um, that the lifestyle that led, you, well, that you adopted, <clears throat> obviously it's music and success driven, but if your family were, you know, they grew up in the, it, that brought you up the way they did, do you think some of that, that it freedom? It definitely rubbed off, man. Yeah. The, the, that, my family's been my rock. Yeah. And they've always supported me in whatever I did. But the freedom? Um, the freedom and, and the creativity and the independence. You know, when I was 17, I, I travelled around America by myself and my girlfriend, man. Like, I was 17. Like, wow. You know, I can't really see kids doing that now so much. No, you know, at all. I was running out of money in Seattle and knocking on people's doors and what? saying, have you got any work? And that's, you know, going... To, Yo. It's mad. Like when I look back, I was pretty independent always, and I was always a traveller. My mum and dad took me around North Africa in a VW bus when I was ten, and yeah, I was just I love travelling, man. I still do love travelling. Did anything ever scare you when you were out on your travels? Was there anything like whoa, you know, near death or anything mad? No, uh, I've had a few moments. Uh, scorpion on my bed scared the fuck out of me. Oh, that's fucking, fucking <laughs> scared enough. Of anybody. I've definitely had a few moments. It's been scary. A few, ta- you know getting a taxi in crazy places and uh, being lost in places, you yeah. know. But I quite enjoy the the, the the buzz of getting lost in a crazy town oh, and trying to find your way back. And I'll always find my way to the, the underground spots and, and yeah. 
that's where I enjoy, that's where I catch a vibe. I, I feel you, like, you drop me off anywhere in the world, I find my way back, you drop a fucking dishwasher in the house, I'm fucked. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, what the fuck's <laughs> this thing? Do you know what I mean? It's, <coughs> it's part of the international man of mystery that I think skits hold. I just, you know? I do love to take a risk, mm. and I do love a bit of danger. Yeah. You know. Now that's that rock and roll thing again, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I've done, you know, I, I, me and Rodney did a bungee jump off Auckland Harbour Bridge. What? That, that was kind of crazy. <coughs> we had a big interview with um, a rap show just before we did the bungee jump and we couldn't talk about anything because we were so worried about the bungee jump. But actually, that <laughs> that was pretty scary. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great conversation on radio, right? That's yeah, like... that was, it was so rubbish. Yeah. Know. But, you know, when yeah. we went to New Zealand, we had Maori welcome, a proper traditional Maori welcome. Really? And they took us to, like, meet the ancestors up at the graveyard. Like, crazy. We had, yeah, we did a lot. We did Mate. a lot. Yeah, yeah, you, the snapshots in the mind that yeah. you must hold. It's just too much. Yeah, fun. I've forgotten. Uh, some of them, are, it's all a bit hazy. That's why you have someone like Rodney with you. because he'll tell Rodney's worse than me. His memory's worse than really? me. Really? <laughs> Sometimes people say to me, do you remember we did that? I was like, no, but it sounds good. Like, what happened there? You know, because yeah, you, you yeah, just forget do. things, yeah. don't you? Do, yeah. you is it, do you think that's um, a symptom, symptom of always thinking forward and never looking back? No, I think it's just doing too many drugs. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just all yeah, yeah. way too much yeah, yeah. hedonism. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. See, I never saw enough of that with, with skits, right? Do you <laughs> know what I mean? I'm sort of man of myth on stage, DJ and all and then Yeah, you know, I mean... Folklore. Jai, when I lost the job at One Extra, I was a, a driver for the Scratch Perverts. And, and there was, that was pretty... Oh, my God. Crazy times. We got all the scratch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think I was the best driver they've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Yeah, come <laughs> like Tony and Joel. Here we go. Uh, I mean, that must have been one hell of. So you just love moments in your career that. Yeah, it did seem to go from one thing to another. Uh, yeah, that's what my life has been like little snapshots. Yeah, one thing leading on to the next, but all intertwined as well. Yeah, that's why I think it's been quite hard to kind of navigate a conversation like this because you're they all merge and me mesh and albums collaborations live you know be, being in one place but doing another at the same time mm. that's really what you're and that's why i say interconnected you socially connected yeah. within the scene it's really hard to kind I of i think i was just out and about so i just met everyone yeah uh, when i did country man and since then i just knew everyone from doing the radio yeah and you know i knew people from queuing up at music house uh, cutting dub plates i knew people just from being on night buses with my record boxes yeah. And I knew people from skate parks, from skating. I knew people from Graf, and I knew people from DJ. And so, yeah, I just. Do you think that's like a moral code of conduct that that you hold to the scene? Is that that because th there's some core principles within though, within your actions and what you've done, you've been very true to the scene. I think it's important to say something, and I think it's important to keep positive, and I think it's important to bring new people through and educate them on the foundations, man. Yeah, I think it's really important to embrace. I mean, a lot of I see a lot of MCs coming out and they're not ready to come out. Mm. I see too many people grab the mic and they, they're not ready. They haven't got the, the flow, they haven't got the content, they haven't got the... They can't even sit on top of the rhythm properly. Like, yeah. you know, do your work. Earn your stripes. And, you know, when I see people go straight to a live stage show, they can't hold the crowd. Yeah, Rodney can hold the tr crowd after 10 tequilas because yeah, he's yeah. professional. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. you see... <laughs> I mean, I think it's important to do your work and I think it's important to learn your art. Mm. And I think too many people mm. don't learn the art properly and they just want pot noodle wrap. They just want to add hot water and it's all ready. Mm. And it's, mm. it's not like that. You have to put the work in to get good, to be good. Yeah. I still feel like I'm, you know, my music tech, I'm so untechy. Like, I know what I know and I have people helping me out um, on the engineering side because I'm still, like, I'm basic. Like, I see other people mixing and producing. I'm like, fuck, I know nothing. I see people talking about music and I'm like, I know nothing. But do you need to know? Because you've got... No, I don't think so. I think if you know what you want, you can you can get things... Yeah. Uh, I know I want my snare to sound like this. I can usually do that. But if I need someone to help me, I can get him yeah. to help. It's, it's the frequency you're looking I think for. it's knowing, you know, as a DJ as well, I, 
you know, it's always the selection rather mm. than the technical skill for me. Mm. You know, I was like a bashment DJ that played hip hop. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, my, my scratching skills were too good, too good, too good yeah. in. That was it. But people don't want much tune, more than that when they're jamming. They're jamming. No, of it's, course. It's... Yeah, yeah. And I used to get bored watching DJs that didn't look like they had a good time. I'm yeah. always having a good time when I'm DJing. You see me, I'm into the tunes. Yeah, I'm yeah, bouncing yeah. around. Yeah. I'm having fun. You have to have fun. Yeah, Watching a DJ that looks bored is the worst thing in the world for me. But it's reciprocated because if people feel you're feeling it, then they're going to feel it. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. We'll have to get you down to the club night, man. We'll yeah, 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 yeah. I'll come down. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. Yeah. What's the future, my brother? <sighs> future, man. Apart I from going to the hospital in, a, in about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> the future for me is creating some memories, man. Yeah. Uh, for me and my loved ones mm. and embrace, like keeping my family mm. good, sorting my family out, making sure my son gets to adulthood and is sorted before I die. Yeah. Yeah. I want to make some good music, but, you know, that's not a priority for me. Yeah. My priority is, you know, having a good time while I'm here mm. and survival. Yeah. Survival. Survival. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, and just loving the people that I love and, and just enjoying enjoying my life. It's kind of hard right now because Babylon is stepping on a lot of people and... Uh, yeah. Fucking hell, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, the bills and the food and like making yeah. a living out of music ain't easy. Possible. Yeah, yeah. I'm still up scaffolding and painting and decorating and doing what I need to do to survive. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, mm-hmm. Yeah. you know, it's not like people think I'm rolling, but I ain't, I ain't don't, like that. yeah, I feel you, bro. Like um, our generation of hip hop kids, we didn't make money like they are now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And most of us have still got day jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but as far as the future, man, I mean. I'm still putting out music on Drag and Drop, my label. Mm. Uh, mostly my stuff, but I've got Joe Byrne, who's my godson, whose album's about to drop. We've done a load of singles already. So he's he's the future for me because mm. he can ride any rhythm. Mm. So I need to just big him up because yeah, he, yeah. he is talking we'll about the future. <laughs> he could, yeah, like he grew up listening to me, and his dad plays reggae, and I play hip hop, and he can ride that and jungle, and yeah. he's Mr. Versatile. But he's got a style, and mm. he's got a flow, and he's got a pattern. Mm. He's, he's bad. If I say so, flying the flag, flying the yeah, flag. Yeah, so I'm always looking for good music, any new music. So I'm I'm always looking for MCs, and I'm trying to make some new beats. Crazy, trying still on it, some man. New beats. Yeah, I mean, you know, if I'm working stacking shelves or whatever I'm doing, I'm still going to be making beats, man. Mm-hmm. It's in the blood, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <brother>. Man, <sighs> the slows we had touched yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> but, but honestly, like the boxes that we've ticked on this one podcast it's actually uncanny because there's some guests that come in that that actually hold the key to a number of fault lines right. yeah you're that guy it, um, un, it no, answers so. questions and and relays and connects other podcasts it's, yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. one big timeline it is yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're connecting big time bro well, you're on. connecting everyone it's working man and uh. to, to have guests like you on uh. where we can chop it up have a giggle. Yeah, yeah. Been a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> Daddy Skits like in the that. building. Come on, cousin. <laughs> Yo, we've seen the fucking first rodeo we do. We do it every <laughs> single week. Uh, Killer Keller podcast. I like him was out of fashion, yeah? Um, crime don't pay, but neither do they, yeah? You take care of yourselves. Don't talk to one or I wouldn't. Be lucky, people. Easy. <laughs> nice. Great.